I'm Val. I'm a German expat currently living in London, and I've made it my mission to see as much of the world as possible. This is my husband, Philip, and together we've been lucky enough to have some pretty incredible adventures over the last 11 years. And this, this is the beautiful country of Albania. From north to south, between mountains and stunning coastline, we've made friends with the locals, enjoyed some delicious food, and we're in complete awe with the mesmerizing Albanian landscape. This Eastern European country should be on your travel bucket list. And here's why. So, four days in Albania and three out of them we had to get up before 6 a.m. Holidays. <laughs> exactly. That's probably why Philip always says he needs a holiday after he was on holiday with me. But anyway, it's for a good reason today. We're on our last leg of the mountain adventure in Albania. And today we're doing a very famous boat trip, possibly the most famous boat trip in Albania, which is on the Komani Lake. It's the Komani Ferry. Basically, it's a massive lake that has been here since 1970 when they built two dams that have then formed this lake. And you can take the ferry. It's about an hour and a half from Skodor um, on a very very adventurous road I must say this was possibly the worst road I've ever been on um, there was some bits that were normal roads some bits that were gravel and sand and just potholes and really bad some bits that were not really a road at all so it was very entertaining and it went on forever um, at some point the sad nav said 58 minutes for 24 kilometers so that was a lot of fun. But uh, now we made it here and the ferry goes from Komani to a town called Fierze. And you can either go one way, go with a car, or you can go there and return on the same day and make it a day trip, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Um, so it looks absolutely beautiful. Already the water is like this green turquoise color. It's insane. It's just super, super windy. So I'm a little bit afraid we're gonna freeze to death. We'll just try our best and I think it's gonna be an amazing day. Immediately when you step onto the ferry, you will see that this is no luxury tourist attraction. This is the most standard of ferries that you can get. Most of it is space for about 10 cars and there's a small passenger room inside to shelter from the wind. There is a tiny shop that sells some crisp and drinks, but don't expect to get a full meal here. This is very much a ferry for the locals who are trying to get from A to B crossing all of the Komani Lake on pretty much the only way there is. The artificial Komani Lake has been created by building one of the largest hydroelectric dams in Europe around 40 years ago. So actually, this used to be a river, combining the white drin, which originates in Kosovo, and the black drin, which comes from Macedonia. The water carved its way through this beautiful mountain landscape, connecting the two ports in Komani and Fiazza which means that during the boat ride, you can see up to 70 mountain peaks, going all the way up to 2000 meters. You can either do a day trip like we did, go from Komani to Fiesa in the morning, have a small lunch break, hop back on the boat and take the same way back. There is so much to see on the way, it won't get boring. Plus looking at it from the other side, I always feel like it's basically a new experience anyway. Keep in mind that there's literally nothing to see in Fiesa. There is a small cafe that serves some food and drinks, but better be prepared and bring whatever you need. Or if you're doing the big loop from Theth to Valbona, as I explained in my last video, you can then get a car from Valbona to Fiesa, hop on the ferry back to Komani and get from there to Skoda to complete the loop. Tickets are around seven euros one way. If you're traveling in the summer, please make sure to book them online beforehand as it gets super busy especially if you plan to bring a car, as there is obviously very limited space. Once the ferry has left the port in Kumani, you will first see some smaller mountains and even some tiny islands in the lake. But fear not, soon after that you will get to the big ones, the ones that you will have seen on all the pictures. Unfortunately, we were a bit unlucky with the weather. It was very cold and gloomy on that day, so the usually bright turquoise water wasn't quite as colorful as on other days. But the contrast between the dark green, mysterious looking water and the rough, white, grayish mountains that just seemed to come out of nowhere was absolutely breathtaking. 
You were never quite sure what would be behind the next corner, the next bend of this seemingly never-ending lake. Along the riverbanks you could see some tiny houses every now and then, completely cut off from any form of civilization. Wouldn't it be for this very ferry that comes by twice a day? There were even some passengers who half the way through the trip jumped into a little wooden boat that had been pulled along and paddled their way to the shore where they likely lived or at least stayed for the night. Even in these small villages that never consisted of more than five houses, there was no sign of 21st century living as we know it. No cars, obviously, because there are no roads. No power lines, no shops, nothing that would even hint to people living there. And yet they do, completely surrounded by nature. It did feel quite surreal being in a place that is so far from the busyness and chaos that usually surrounds us. If it wouldn't have been for the pretty loud engines of the ferry, there would have been no sound apart from the wind blowing through the canyons. It was an eerie atmosphere gliding through the calm waters of the river, rough rock walls going up left and right of you with nearly vertical drops. Some goats here and there and a couple of birds, but mostly cold hard stone. And us on a tiny little boat a dot of civilization in an otherwise purely majestical, natural world. For me, this is what Albania is about. Incredibly stunning landscapes, untouched, as it would have been hundreds of years ago. Without being turned into a mass tourist attraction. Because they simply don't have to. There is no need for stylish, funky party boats and buzzloads full of tourists every day. The beauty of these places speaks for itself without having to shout about it.